Hi guys, and welcome back. Now that we've got an application inside of our GitLab repository here that we've tested out, we know that that Docker file works properly on our local machine, so we should be able to build that with Canico now. So over here on the Canico repository, they've got basically a huge readme that kind of describes how to go about running different types of builds. Now, remember from the diagram that we were looking at before, there are different sources that you might be dealing with, like uh, GitLab repository, which is what we're going to be doing in this case. And then you've got also different targets or destinations, which is going to be your container registry where you want to push to. And we're going to be using Amazon ECR, which I don't really have a picture for here at the moment. Um, but just keep in mind that in this case, we're actually going to be reading from a private GitLab repository as our source. So what we can do is just take a look at how to run Canico in a Kubernetes cluster here. And in order to run Canico inside of a Kubernetes cluster, we need to have a pod definition. So we're actually going to be creating a pod spec here. And this is going to refer to the Canico container image. So basically we're going to deploy a new pod using the Canico executor container image. And then there are going to be a bunch of arguments that you can pass in to the executor utility that runs as part of this image. And that is going to determine where your source context is. And it's also going to determine where your destination container image is going to be pushed up to. So our context here is going to be our application source. And so in this example here, they're actually using a Google Cloud Storage URL in order to download a tarball, a gzipped tarball from Google Cloud Storage. But in our case, our context or our source is actually going to be a Git repository instead. And so we're going to be using a Git URL instead of using the Google Cloud Storage URI right here. You can also override your Docker file. So if you have a file named something else other than just Docker file, you can actually override that and specify the exact name of your Docker file that you want to use for the build. And then under destination here, this is where you would set the URL to the container registry that you want to push to. Now, in order to provide the secrets or the credentials in order to authenticate to the source context, so we have a private GitLab repository and we need to provide credentials for that, we can actually use something known as Kubernetes secrets and then we can mount those secrets into the container in our pod spec configuration right here. So we're going to take a look at how to kind of set this up. So for starters, let's go ahead and just grab this for uh, grab this um, example here, and we'll just bring it over into uh, VS Code. So let me just copy that over into VS Code here, and I'm just going to add another file to my project here. I may not actually commit it but I'll just call it canico.yaml. And I'll just paste in this file here. And we can go ahead and just edit this to just base it on our needs here. So we don't need to customize things like the image here at the moment. Uh, so this is just referring to the executor image. And so generally speaking, we're going to be using that, um, although we are actually going to be tweaking that a little bit later on. But for the time being, what we care about most is setting the source context here. And so this is going to be the Git URL over to our GitLab repository. So let me actually open up Firefox here. We'll come over to Git and we'll say clone. And then we can, of course, just choose the um, Git repository here, which will be gitlab.com slash Trevor Sullivan slash my web app. So I'm actually going to pull in the HTTP URL here. And let me find VS Code here, and we're going to paste that in. Now, instead of using HTTPS, we're actually going to use Git instead. And so we'll do Git, colon, slash, slash, gitlab.com, slash, Trevor Sullivan, slash, mywebapp.git. So that's going to be our source context. However, we need to set up authentication to that. And the reason we're seeing these squiggly lines here, you can just kind of ignore that, is because if we take a look at problems right here, it's complaining that we don't have any resource limits set up for our pod. Um, so I'm just actually going to ignore this for the time being. So if you do see those squigglies, that's probably why. So what we need to do, if we switch over to the repository for Canico itself and do a quick search for git password here, you can see there's some directions for using a private git repository. And they only mention GitHub here, but this does actually work for GitLab as well. 
And so what we're going to want to do is either pass in the token uh, to authenticate to GitLab either using this URL here, or we can actually pass the username and password in by using the environment variables git underscore username and git underscore password inside of the pod spec configuration. So this is the route that we're going to go, um, but what we need to do first is actually generate those credentials. So back on the repository itself, we'll go to, um, let's see, settings down here, and then we'll look for a general, and we'll just head over here, and actually we're looking for repository here, not general, and we're going to look for deploy tokens, and this is going to allow us to grant access to our repo, and I'm just going to call this uh, key CBT nuggets. I could set an expiration date here. So maybe I'll set it one just a couple of days out. We can also set a username. So I'll set that to Trevor. And then we of course need to make sure that we have read repository access in order to grant access. So let's cr click create deploy token here. And then this is going to generate a token or password for us to use. And we can generate a secret for that based on the username and password. So back in our VS code here, I'm actually going to add in another resource. And the way that we do that in a Kubernetes manifest file is to do a triple dash here. And then we'll go ahead and add in a secret. And I've got an extension installed that'll just help me generate a little snippet here. And then I'll call this GitLab source as the name. And then down here under data, this is where we can set uh, different key value pairs. So I'll say username Trevor. And then for the password here, I'll go ahead and paste in the token that we just copied to our clipboard. And so now we can actually mount this into our Canico pod. So now that we've got our credentials defined on our secret here, we can go ahead and set up a couple of environment variables down here inside of our container definition in order to map in our secrets and set those as environment variables in the container itself. So I'm going to add the ENV section to our container spec right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and just create an array of items here. I'll do a dash and just say name. And the name will be git username. And then for the value, we're going to do value from and then say secret key ref. This is how we can reference a secret value and map it directly into the container as an environment variable. And then the name of the secret is going to be, of course, GitLab source. So we'll choose that. And then our secret here actually has a mapping. So we have two different key value pairs. And in order to refer to one of those, we can do key and then say username. And so that's going to basically go to the GitLab source secret. It's gonna look for a key named username and then whatever the value of that username is, is going to get assigned to git username. And then we'll do the same thing. I'll just copy this down, alt shift down arrow in VS code, and then we'll do git, whoops, git password. And we'll simply change the key to, uh, what do we call it, token? No, password. So we'll do password. And so now we have these two environment variables defined on our pod spec. And so that should allow Canico to actually access that source. And it looks like I actually have a duplicate ENV section down here from the sample that we copied. So I'll just choose that and we'll go ahead and hit save. And then what I'm gonna do is go ahead and do a kube cuddle. And I'm gonna create a new namespace for Canico on my cluster. And if you don't have a cluster, you can go ahead and spin one up. I'm actually gonna create one called Canico2 because it looks like I already have one called Canico. And then I'll do a kube cuddle, namespace Canico2, and then we'll do an apply dash dash file name. And I'll just refer to the Canico.yaml file here in my project directory. All right, and it looks like it says secret v1 cannot be handled. It looks like we have a little bug here. So let's see. And what's actually happening here is that by default, the secrets are expected to be base 64 strings. So what you can actually do is instead of converting the values to base 64, you can just change this to say string data instead of just data. And that will bypass the necessity of setting it up as a base 64 string. And then we'll just go ahead and do another, another kubectl apply. And then we'll do a kubectl namespace 
Mechanico 2, and we'll do describe pod Mechanico, and that should show us the status of our pod here. And as you can see, it says it successfully assigned this, and it looks like it's having a failure on a mount here that I think we just copied in from the example. So I'm actually just going to select this volume mount and just comment it out. And same thing for the volume mount right here inside of the pod spec. We'll go ahead and, or sorry, that's part of the container spec actually. And then the volume is actually part of the pod spec. So I'll comment both of those out because we don't need those at the moment. And I'll go ahead and try to do a delete. We'll do a cube cuddle. And then we'll do a delete on the Canico YAML file. And then we'll just do a control R to search for apply again. And we'll just rerun apply. That'll recreate our secret and our pod. And then I'll just hit up arrow to do a describe on the pod. And as you can see, it successfully started Canico. Now I can do logs. So let's do logs for the same pod. And that should show us the status. And it looks like it's failing here. And that's probably because it it looks like it can't find the Docker file. And that's because we actually need to specify the name here. We'll just say Docker file. We'll save that. And then we'll just do another delete and reapply. And then my, I'm guessing it's probably going to complain about the destination because this is not a valid destination. But uh, let's just see what happens when we do an apply here. And then we'll take a look at the logs once more. Let's go up to logs here and see what it says. And as you can see, it's doing a pre-flight check against the target container registry. And so it's actually failing because it's not able to verify that we have push access to the Elastic Container Registry, but we haven't even set that up yet. So we're kind of expecting to see that. But as you can see right up here, it actually did successfully clone our source code from GitLab. So that's actually a really good sign. We've got our credentials set up successfully for GitLab. And so in our next video, we can go ahead and set up our destination in Amazon Elastic Container Registry. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.